Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV. I'm Vedant Agarwal. Our lead story, well, 24 hours after the big election announcement, it's rally versus rally. So it's a battle for optics, really. In Andhra Pradesh, the NDA's big show of strength, mega star power with the Janasena, TDP and the BJP projecting united face days after the alliance was sealed. Meanwhile, in Maharashtra, where, where of course alliance troubles continue for both the Congress and the BJP, a mega show of strength by the opposition and Rahul Gandhi's grand closing of his Bharat Joro Nyaya Yatra, Sharad Pawar, Udhav Thakre, uh, Mehbooba Mufti, Stalin, Tejasri were among some of the opposition leaders present there. But looking at the state of Andhra Pradesh, well, it's a very complicated state and the dream team, so to speak, is back in the southern state, the TDP, the BJP and the Janasena. Can they repeat their 2014 victory? That is the big question. Massive crowds at Chilakuluri Peta in Andhra Pradesh for the first meeting of the BJP, TDP and Janasena after they formed a tripartite alliance. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, TDP Chief Chandrabab Naidu and Janasena Chief Pawan Kalyan were sharing a stage after 10 years. Chandrababu Naidu or Pawan Kalyan दोनों लंबे समय से आप लोगों के हक के लिए आंध्र के विकास के लिए दिन रात आपके लिए काम करते रहे हैं नरेंद्र मोदी टारगेटेड द जगन मोहन रेड्डी गवर्नमेंट saying its ministers were competing with each other on corruption and said YSRCP and Congress should not be seen as two separate entities. वो थोड़ा गुस्सा कांग्रेस की तरफ चला जाए ताकि एनडीए के लोगों को लाभ न मिले वो चंद्रबाबु नायडू एंड पवन कल्याण से इट वाज ओनली अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ नरेंद्र मोदी एंड द एनडीए दैट नॉट जस्ट द कंट्री बट द स्टेट कुड प्रोग्रेस नायडू हैज लेफ्ट द एनडीए ट्वाइस इन द पास्ट प्रॉमिस टू स्टैंड बाय इट मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि देश को सही समय में मोदी जी जैसा सही नेता मिला है आपके पूरी कोशिशों में हम आपके साथ रहेंगे ये हमारा वादा है विद कैमरा पर्सन नागराजू उमा सुधीर एनडीटीवी Meanwhile, in battleground Maharashtra, a show of strength by the opposition with Rahul Gandhi rallying uh, opposition leaders from Tejasvi Yadav, M.K. Stalin, uh, also Sharad Pawar, uh, Udhav Thakre and even Mehbooba Mufti and Farooq Abdullah. Uh, Rahul Gandhi's uh, nearly 7,000 kilometer long uh, Bharat Joro Nyayatra has come to an end and that too in Mumbai which is politically crucial. Alliance trouble continues both the BJP and the Congress. हम शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं एक शक्ति से लड़ रहे हैं अब सवाल उठता है वो शक्ति क्या है राजा की आत्मा ईवीएम में है ईडी में है सीबीआई में है इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट में है एक वरिष्ठ नेता नाम नहीं लेना चाहता हूं इसी प्रदेश के एक वरिष्ठ नेता कांग्रेस पार्टी को छोड़ते हैं और रो के कहते हैं मेरी मां से रो के कहते हैं कि सोनिया जी मुझे शर्म आ रही है मेरे में इन लोगों से इस शक्ति से डरने लड़ने की हिम्मत नहीं है 
मैं जेल नहीं जाना चाहता हूं फ्रॉम कन्याकुमारी your journey has reached mumbai today this will reach delhi soon pm modi did only two things in last 10 years one is foreign trips another is fake propaganda we must stop this now from the day we formed india alliance bjp stopped using the very term india such is the fear that is why pm modi stood down to defend our alliance he calls india alliance corrupt but electoral bond scam proved bjp is corrupt aaj ek taraf jahan nafrat phailaya ja raha hai jahan desh ke sanvidhanik sansthanon ko hijack kiya ja raha hai asthai sarkaron ko chuni hui sarkaron ko loktantra mein matdan jo aap logo ne kiya waisi sarkaron ko kharida ja raha hai ed cbi ke zariye koi मोदी जी को हराने के लिए नहीं वो सोच को हराने के लिए जो देश को बांटना चाहती है उसके लिए हम लोग एक हुए। आज झारखंड में एक लाइन बहुत मशहूर हो रही है झारखंड झुकेगा नहीं और आज इस शिवाजी पार्क के ऐतिहासिक मैदान से मैं उस तानाशाही शक्ति के खिलाफ ये कह देना चाहती हूं इंडिया झुकेगा नहीं और इंडिया रुकेगा नहीं Moving on to the big electoral bonds flashpoint before the Lok Sabha polls. Well, the Election Commission, on the direction of the Supreme Court, has made more data public when it comes to the electoral bonds. This data essentially is what political parties had submitted uh, to the Election Commission in a sealed cover. Now, the Supreme Court registry had returned this data uh, to the Election Commission and had asked uh, uh, the Election Commission to make it public by 5 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, but even now, uh, details on the unique bond. bond numbers and the correlation between the donors and political parties has not been made and moving out to a big exclusive in fact nitin gadkari spoke to ndtv's uh, editor in chief uh, sanjay pogalia and he spoke about the electoral bonds as well saying that it's a fact that elections cost money take a look ek abhi ka vishay jwalant hai agar uski charcha nahi karunga to baat chit adhuri reh jayegi वो है इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड से जुड़ा हुआ बॉन्ड आया कई साल हो गए सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कह दिया गलत है अब नहीं होगा और अब वो नाम सामने आ रहे हैं किसने बॉन्ड खरीदे और किस पार्टी को कितने पैसे मिले इसमें असल मुद्दा ये है कि बात थी कि कैश का इस्तेमाल कम हो भ्रष्टाचार कम हो चुनाव साफ सुथरे हों वो दिल्ली तो बहुत दूर है ना देखिए एक बात तो सच है चुनाव में पैसा तो लगता है सभी पार्टियों को लगता है और आप अगर इकोनॉमी को अच्छा करेंगे नंबर एक पर करेंगे तो बॉन्ड के रूप में नंबर एक में अगर पॉलिटिकल पार्टी को फाइनेंस होता है इसी भाव के साथ ये योजना बनी थी तब अरुण जेटली जी भी वित्त मंत्री थे उसमें गलत क्या था खैर सुप्रीम कोर्ट का निर्णय मैं कोई उसके ऊपर कॉमेंट्स नहीं करता अगर आप बॉन्ड्स नहीं अलाउ करोगे तो लोग नंबर दो में पैसे लेंगे होने तो वाला ही है तो कहीं ना कहीं मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि सभी पार्टियों को अगर इस प्रकार का सोर्स मिल जाएगा तो अच्छा होगा और वर्ल्ड में भी कुछ जगह सरकार फाइनेंस करती है पार्टियों को कोई ना कोई व्यवस्था सब पार्टियों ने एक्सेप्ट करके देश में होने की आवश्यकता है ऐसा मुझे लगता है और जिन्होंने बॉन्ड दिए उनके किसी बदले में नहीं दिए अच्छा कोई बॉन्ड वही देगा जो धनवान है धनवान वही है कि जो कॉन्ट्रैक्टर होगा ट्रेड बिजनेस इंडस्ट्री में बड़ा होगा वही दान दे सकता है तो उसको इस प्रकार से जोड़ना भी गलत है और मुझे लगता है उसफूत रूप से लोगों ने बॉन्ड के रूप में मदद की थी और वही हमको मिली है लेकिन जो बात सामने आ रही है सर वो यह है कि इस बॉन्ड में 
कोई दूसरा व्यक्ति काले को सफेद करके बॉन्ड से दिलवा सकता है लेकिन काला पैसा इसके पीछे न हो इसकी गारंटी को नहीं दे सकता देखिए सर एक बात बताता हूं ये काला और सफेद पैसा क्या होता है मैं आपको एक बात बताता हूं जिस पैसे से एम्प्लॉयमेंट क्रिएट होता है जिस पैसे से ग्रोथ क्रिएट होती है और जिस पैसे से गवर्नमेंट का रेवेन्यू बढ़ता है उसको हम ब्लैक कैसे कहें प्रॉब्लम वो है कि जो पैसा लेके कहीं दुनिया में जाके डम करता है तो कहीं ना कहीं आर्थिक विश्व में आर्थिक ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन हो रहा है Moving now to the other big headline well the election commission has revised the dates of counting uh, for the two northeastern states Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim which also go to polls uh, simultaneously with the Lok Sabha elections the dates have been revised from the 4th of June uh, to the 2nd of June and uh, there's going to be an interesting uh, time because remember uh, second is when uh, exit polls will also start uh, trickling in uh, the results for all other elections including the general elections will be out on the 4th of June and the other big headline well the enforcement directorate versus arvind kejriwal uh, face off intensifying in the run up to polls amid nine summons issued to him in the liquor policy case he's also been summoned in the delhi jal board case on monday so that's going to be crucial remember uh, the cbi has alleged nexus between the jal board the aam aadmi party and a private company trouble mounts for arvind kejriwal after ed summoned him in two different cases Arvind Kejriwal has been summoned on Monday in Delhi Jal Board case and on March 21st in the liquor policy case. This comes just a day after a Delhi court granted him bail on two complaints filed by ED for skipping summons. The ED case is based on an FIR registered by CBI and alleges bribery in Delhi Jal Board awarding a 38 crore contract to NKG Infrastructure Limited. This is the ninth summons in the liquor policy case. Previously, Chief Minister has skipped eight summons by the Enforcement Directorate. Last summons was issued on March 4th, which Kejriwal skipped, citing court hearing on 16th March. Aam Aadmi Party attacked the BJP, claiming that their plan is to arrest Arvind Kejriwal to stop him from campaigning for Lok Sabha polls. उनको कानून से कोई मतलब नहीं है, उन्हें इन्वेस्टिगेशन से कोई मतलब नहीं है, उन्हें जस्टिस से कोई मतलब नहीं है। प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी को सिर्फ एक चीज से मतलब है कि किसी ना किसी तरीके से चुनाव से पहले अरविंद केजरीवाल को जेल में डाल दो द बीजेपी काउंटर दिस बाय सेइंग दीज आर नॉट न्यू केसेस ये सारे केस दो साल से चल रहे हैं तो दो साल पहले तो चुनाव नहीं था तो अब चुनाव आ गया तो क्या चुनाव आने के कारण भ्रष्टाचारी का भ्रष्टाचार माफ कर दिया जाए आपके दो दो मंत्री जेल में हैं, उनको कोर्ट बेल नहीं दे रही है नाउ द टू बिग क्वेश्चन दैट अराइज आफ्टर दिस इज दैट विल अरविंद केजरीवाल अपियर बिफोर दी दिस टाइम एंड ऑल्सो वॉट विल बी द पोलिटिकल इम्पैक्ट ऑफ दिस ऑन दी आम आदमी पार्टी जस्ट बिफोर द लोकसभा पोल्स इन डेली विद कैमरा पर्सन संजय कौशिक This is Ishika Verma for NDTV. So trouble mounting there for Arvind Kejriwal. We'll take a short break now. News continues on the other side. Welcome back. A special coverage of the Russian elections. Well, amid fresh strikes on the city of Belgorod by Russia amid the Russia-Ukraine war, the Russian presidential elections uh, entered their last day of voting today. Voters, especially those living in the Russia-occupied Ukraine region and in the border regions, are hoping for more stability and reconstruction of their cities in the future. My colleague Uma Shankar reports from Ground Zero. Today is the last day of polling for Russian presidential election and as we can see at the long queue here at a polling booth in Moscow, there are 112 million voters here and as per the data of Central Election Commission of Russia, more than 60% vote polled in first two days of polling. Uh, it will be uh, more than 80% as per the expectation here. Uh, it's certain that President Putin is going to win again and there is no doubt about that uh, and uh, that's why preparation uh, for the celebration has already started at Kremlin. 
uh, we want to show you the uh, the kind of uh, uh, queue here and the kind of security arrangement here at a polling booth in Moscow. Uh, uh, though there is no strong opposition exists here, but the widow of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, uh, Yulia uh, Navalnaya, has called for an election day protest against President uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, 12 p.m. time was given to the supporters of Navalny. Uh, it was called Midday Against Putin and it was an idea put forward by Navalny two weeks before his death. Uh, no major incident reported so far. A uh, few incidents uh, happened uh, during the poll uh, in Russia, uh, like a woman uh, put inflammable at uh, a polling uh, booth uh, and tried to put uh, it on fire, but it was contained uh, uh, very soon. Uh, in an another incident, a woman put a green dye uh, into the uh, ballot box. Uh, there were, were also increased attacks uh, uh, from Ukraine in border cities of uh, Russia, uh, in Belgorod and uh, Kursk region. Uh, amid tight security, voting is going on. Results uh, would be out by tonight or early morning tomorrow. And uh, uh, it is not going to surprise anyone. Uh, President Putin is all set uh, for a new six years term. Uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, written on the wall here. In Russia, three days polling uh, for presidential election is on. More than 112 uh, million registered voters uh, here. And the polling percentage would touch uh, 80 percent uh, that's expected here. Uh, let's have a quick look uh, what's the presidential election process here in Russia. Uh, in the original constitution of 1993, there was provision of uh, only four years term for the president. But uh, in 2008, when uh, Dmitry Medvedev was the president uh, and uh, Vladimir Putin was PM, constitution was amended and instead of uh, four years term, provision for six years term uh, for the president was introduced. Uh, now, uh, how a president uh, uh, gets elected? Uh, there can be two rounds of voting. If no candidate gets uh, absolute majority in first round, uh, then uh, there would be uh, the second round of uh, voting between the two topmost contenders. Uh, one has to get over 50 percent votes to get uh, to, to defeat another. Uh, this is also a notable fact that uh, presidential election went into runoff only in 1996 election, not after that till date. Uh, now question is, what's the criteria for being a candidate uh, in Russian presidential election? Applicant should be a Russian citizen, uh, that's the first uh, condition, uh, permanently residing in Russia uh, uh, at least for last 10 years. Uh, there should be no criminal charge against the applicant, that's also very important. Uh, so, how, uh, nomi uh, how to nominate a candidate? Uh, let's have a quick look on that. There are uh, three ways to nominate a candidate. Uh, any political party in lower house uh, of uh, Federal Assembly uh, known as Duma uh, can nominate a candidate. Any political party can nominate a candidate outside Duma too, but in that case, uh, one lakh signature of the voters needed in favor of that particular applicant. Uh, there is a third way of uh, nomination as well. Uh, if not a political party, then a group of at least 500 people can nominate a candidate, uh, but it needs 3 lakhs voters signature in favor of uh, that particular candidate. After having all these, uh, all these uh, uh, criteria fulfilled, Central Election Commission of Russia uh, examines uh, the applications. It can reject the application if it doesn't find a lakh or three lakhs bona fide signature depending on the case. Uh, many times it's alleged by opposition uh, party or opposition leader, leaders that uh, 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 this is the tool to reject the candidature of any applicant uh, whom Kremlin uh, doesn't like. Uh, for example, this time Boris uh, Borisovich uh, Nadezhin uh, and anti-war leaders application got rejected because CEC found discrepancies in uh, signatures. It was told that many signatures were uh, of the voters uh, whom have already died. Uh, as of now, apart from uh, Vladimir Putin, there are three more candidates uh, uh, in the fray, but uh, there is no chance uh, for anyone to get elected when President Put uh, Putin uh, himself is a candidate.
Right behind me is the road to Kremlin, the most powerful establishment in Russia where President Putin has been seated for a long time. Preparations are uh, going on for the ceremony after the election result. Uh, so the road towards uh, Kremlin is closed for now. Uh, lakhs of tourists uh, come here every year. Those who are coming uh, now a bit uh, disappointed as they are not getting uh, the chance to see Kremlin from close proximity. Presidential elections have been held in Russia seven times prior to this since uh, 1991 and uh, this is the eighth time. Before this, uh, Putin has won four presidential uh, elections. Uh, this would be his fifth term as president. Uh, he also served as uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Russia from 1999 to 2000 and again from 2008 to 2012. Let's uh, have a quick look at uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, political uh, career so far. Putin, who worked for 15 years as a foreign intelligence officer of the KGB, Russia's uh, most powerful intelligence agency uh, during the Soviet Union era, returned to Russia in 1991 after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. He began his political career in uh, St. Uh, Petersburg in 1991. Uh, in 1996, he moved uh, to Moscow, where he briefly served as a director of the Federal Security Service which replaced uh, the KGB. Uh, Putin was appointed acting president in 1999 by then-president Boris Yeltsin. Uh, afterward, uh, he served as the prime minister of Russia for a short time. Putin became president of Russia in uh, 2000 following uh, Yeltsin resignation. At that time, uh, the presidential tenure was uh, just four years. Uh, and after serving two consecutive terms, he could not contest the election uh, for the th third time. Uh, therefore, Putin served as Prime Minister from 2008 to 2012. In 2008, during the presidency of uh, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, changes in the constitution uh, increased the president's uh, term from four years to six years. Uh, consequently, uh, when Putin became president in 2012, the next elections uh, were held in two, uh, 2018, which he uh, won again. Uh, subsequently, the constitution was amended once again in uh, 2020, following a nationwide uh, referendum. Uh, President Putin signed a new law that uh, reset his previous all terms. Uh, this uh, provision allowed him to run for two terms again. Uh, disregarding his previous uh, terms uh, before the uh, new law. Despite uh, demands from his uh, supporters in the party to grant him the right to remain president uh, for a uh, lifetime, uh, Putin, uh, portraying himself as a democratic uh, uh, person, stated that uh, adhering to the rule of two uh, consecutive terms is the correct approach. Uh, thus, Putin, uh, who served as president in uh, 2012 and 2018, is able to contest the elections again uh, this time. Uh, moreover, uh, he will also be eligible to contest uh, uh, the election uh, in 2030 and can remain president uh, until uh, 2036. Currently, uh, Putin is uh, 17, uh, 71 years old and has become the leader of the Soviet Union era uh, who has held uh, uh, power as president, uh, as uh, prime minister or president of Russia for the longest period uh, time of time, 24 years, second only to Stalin's 29 years. Following another six years term as president, he will surpass Stalin's record in 2036.